In this video, we're going to talk about the motor mount. You can see that the motor is mounted to the bell housing through our adapter, and we have the motor resting on top of the steering rack right here, and it's on a piece of ABS, spacing it up to the correct height, the height that we want once it's mounted. And so we did all of our measurements, did our design, made sure everything was centered, the proper elevation, so forth. These are the stock motor mounts, one on the other side there. They're the stock shock mounted motor mounts, which we're gonna reuse. Now, remember the purpose of the motor mount is to support the motor in the front of the transmission in the vehicle to keep it from going side to side, up and down, all that. But it's also to prevent the motor from twisting due to torque. So let's take a look at the two pieces that we've come up with that uh, make up our motor mount setup. First we have this piece right here. This is going to bolt to the front of the motor and these were indexed based on how that motor sits in there. Their mounting holes are never, you know, at, at 12 and 6 and 3 and 9, so they're slightly off. And this is uh, where the uh, wiring for the encoder comes in. And these are our holes where we're mounting to the rest of our, our uh, mount. So this is going to bolt to the front of the motor. Now this is just in the raw form, nothing's been painted yet or cleaned up. We just finished the fitment portion of this. So what we have here is the pieces that will sit in the cradle or sit in the uh, motor mounts right here where my hands are. There's the two bolts on each side. We'll go through some holes here. There's a little pad on the bottom here that spaces it up. And so then this saddle right here is where the motor sits in here. This is a real snug fit on the motor. And so this is very rigid. You're not going to, uh, you know, move that at all. And then, so this bolts into the car, and then this piece bolts to it, and like I said, into the motor. So this then supports the motor and keeps it from twisting. So let's see if we can uh, install this in the vehicle and see what it looks like once it is installed in the vehicle. I'm in here with the motor and mount inside the engine compartment here. So I'm probably going to block the uh, the view here. Like I said, that fits extremely snugly around the, the motor there and just is held in place by itself. Now I'll put my four bolts in here loosely and then I'll put the front piece across. So I'm not going to bore you with that so I'll be back in a moment. Well here it is in place. Now once the battery racks and other things have been built. This will all come back out. Uh, I mean, the motor won't come out, but the motor mount will come out and it's cleaned and painted or powder coated, whatever we end up doing with it. And all that's done at the same time as the battery racks and so forth. 
So right now it's just in place for fitment purposes uh, so we can get the exact clearances uh, for the front um, battery rack in here. Uh, the front of this is higher than the rear. So this is be our, our, our closest point. And so we want to have a little bit of clearance there between the motor and the battery rack. The battery rack, uh, as you'll see in a future video, is going to be mounted to the sides there, to the uh, frame piece. So that's the uh, motor mount in this particular one. Nothing moves in any direction. Uh, we have our clearance between the motor and the steering rack. Um, and everything is held in place nicely. So this is a, um, you know, motor mount. There's a lot of ways that you could do this. This is just the way that we chose to do this particular one. So, coming up, we'll be working on our battery boxes as well as our battery box mounting for the front here. So the battery box will be a separate unit. We'll have the mounts in place in the vehicle and the battery rack will be lowered in and then mount it to that. So the entire battery rack can be removed uh, as one piece if so desired. As with, you know, uh, all of our conversions, everything's quite modular so that um, the way this is, basically you could remove six bolts um, or you could remove four bolts actually and um, and then disconnect the, the bell housing and pull this motor out. So we like to keep things easy. So if there was a, ever an issue with a motor failure and you had to pull the motor out, the battery, uh, front battery box as a unit could be hoisted out of the car with, you know, with just, you know, four or six bolts and boom, it comes out and then another four bolts and uh, then whatever's in the, uh, well, another five bolts on the um, adapter, the motor could come out. Uh, these are things that, you know, we never expect to have to service or replace, but in case that you do, it's nice to know that it's designed to be repaired and to be repaired rather easily. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, stay watching for uh, our next one on battery racks. We're gonna do front and rear on this, but we'll probably feature the front one in a separate video. And then uh, we'll have another video for doing the, all of the stuff in the rear, the rear battery mounting, the charger and so forth. So. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.